Hi, I'm Josh Brown of the Reformed Broker Blog and CNBC's Fast Money, and I'm sitting here with Brent Cook, who is the author of Exploration Insights, an influential newsletter in the gold mining space. Um, so Brent, thanks for uh, taking some time out. I know you're anxious to visit all the uh, gold companies that you're aware of and some of the new ones. Mm -hmm. What do you think is, uh, what jumps out at you most about this conference versus others you've been to? Because I know you've been doing this a long time. I guess what, what surprised me, and this is just the junior resource sector, there's not a, big, a lot of big mining companies here. Right. But we've got, I would guess, in the order of 600 companies here. Next year at this time, at this show, there'll be half that many. Uh, we're in a real downturn. Um, it's really tough to raise money right now. This is a very capital intensive business because most of these companies, they don't really have income. Right. They're out exploring, spending money, uh, looking for a gold project or a gold deposit or a copper deposit or whatever. So that's what's probably going to, is going to be most interesting next year. So is this almost make or break, being able, to, being able to raise money now before the downturn gets more severe? Is this conference that much more important because of what you think the survival rate might be? Yeah, I think actually it is. It's, it, it is very important right now. Um, is the desperation in the air? Yes. <laughs> okay, we like that. It's like a game show. And it's good. It's, it's, it's good. It, we've, we've had too much um, undisciplined money come into the sector. It's got to get out. And once we whittle down these companies down to, the, to the, the best, and this is what's interesting in this sector is it all goes up together and all comes down together. Right. So the good goes down with the bad, and we're being positioned right now for what I think is going to be a fantastic time to be investing if you know what you're doing. So I'm a Wall Street guy and most of my readers are equities for the most part, but because of the rise in commodity prices of 2010, 2011, and obviously gold for the last decade, I'm sensing a lot of that undisciplined money, as you put it, is coming from people like me or uh, people from my part of the world, because I'm a total tourist here. Would you say that's accurate? Is it coming from like institutional investors that are first wading in, or retail people? What? I would say for the most part, certainly the larger companies, the ones that looked like they had resources developing, um, a lot of that money came from uh, funds, investment funds, hedge funds, a lot of it out of the states. And um, most of them didn't have a good experience. Right, they're, which, learning, they're learning the hard way they, that they this isn't so the easy. Top. They're coming to the top. Now's the time to be start looking. Uh, so if, if, if you're relatively new to the junior miners, um, and I certainly am, and I know a lot of people are going to watch this video are, but they're interested, one of the things I repeatedly have heard over the last two days at the conference is that the way to look at this really is venture, and the way to think about this really is You've got to buy into 10 or 20 of these, and the winner will pay for all the losers. That sounds, to me, it sounds almost a little bit reckless, but that's how the big money is made. Is that a, is that a true statement, or am I exaggerating? I think certainly that's possible, but I don't think that's the way to do it. My, my, my feeling is you want to come here with a sharpshooter and just pick off the few that you really like. Is that possible to do? Yes. And that's so, what I do, anyway. So, what, are, what is the number one factor that distinguishes a junior miner at this stage in the game that genuinely has the ability to do something or really has the ability to raise capital and stick it out or really has reserves? What's the one thing that you look for with your trained eye that some people might not be aware of? All right, well, with my eye, I'm a geologist, so what I look at is a project. And I look at a, the, whatever... As opposed to what, management? Well, or? management's key. That's, that's certainly okay. number one. You've got okay. to have honest people that understand how to finance and run a business. But after that, it comes down to the project, and that's where the money's made or lost. And you need to be under, into a company that has a project that has this real potential to produce a discovery that makes up for the risks you're taking. And I'm talking, we're looking for someone whose stock can go from seven cents to 70 cents in a week if they make that discovery. If you can identify those, you do really well. Now, do you listen to promoter? I know promoters are an integral part of this scene, and, and promoter has a negative connotation in the United States, especially in terms of stocks, but I know it's not, I know it's not necessarily the same negative connotation here, and promoters are a really necessary part of the, the ecosystem would you would you agree with that and, and do you pay attention to promoters yeah I do agree with that I do pay attention to them um, I mean they're part of the business you've got like I say 600 companies here at the Cambridge show today they've got to get their message out to people like me and, who and investors fund, who will fund these companies precisely so there's good promoters and there's bad promoters same in the states I guess now are there larger gold mining companies or are there hedge funds to your knowledge that 
are taking advantage of the fact that the survival rate is going to slim and they're going to be able to uh, step in and basically call the shots if they have capital. Yes. Who, wh which types of investors do you see doing that? Uh, certainly major mining companies with cash. There's a number of investors. Like the big ones that everyone's heard of, like Gold Corp and Kinross, or not Corp, necessarily? Gold Corp, Kinross, uh, New Gold, um, Yamana. I mean, there's, there's a list of probably so 20. So, I mean, are they watching this like a hawk and, and saying, hey, these guys look decent, but it looks like they're having trouble raising money, we can yes. do something? Yes, okay. that's, they've got people, and that's their job, is to just look through the sector and pick out the projects that fit whatever their criteria is. Now, if you're an investor, though, that's not a negative, that's a positive, that's a positive. provided you can get a good valuation. My, my whole goal is to sell whatever stock I buy to someone smarter than me, not dumber than me. So smarter being a mining company. So here's my last question, and I, I've seen some of your work and, and your videos, and I've read some of your stuff. You seem to be one of the people that is more than willing to look at this sometimes with a, a jaundiced or <laughs> a, a cynical eye, and that's pretty refreshing, I guess. Uh, and, and I'm kind of your counterpart for, for my world. So what's the number one red flag that investors who are looking at juniors, what's the one thing if they see, they should run the other way? And I'm sure there are more than one. There's, there's a lot. Uh, certainly, if a company's listed on the OTC, go to the website. If you see an American flag, the Statue of Liberty, the gold bars with the flag <laughs> draped over it, run. Because they're herding American money into... Exactly. Okay. That's, that's, that's a serious one. Another one, I think, is just look at their burn. Look at the share structure. Share structure is key. Right. If they've got 100, 200, 300 million shares out, and they're just a junior exploration company, they've already blown up the company. You can see that they didn't, it, what they were trying to do didn't work. The okay. so share structure is key as well. Okay. You want tight share structure. Well, you heard it here first. This is Brand Cook. I'm Josh Brown. Thanks so much for watching.